Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your lesson on Monday uh, for our shared writing. So I'm very excited because we're going to be doing our shared write on a brand new topic today. So let's go straight over there and find out what it is. So hopefully you can see my screen now. Today we are going to start our shared write all about the parent pleaser, which is going to do exactly what it sounds like. So we're going to come up with a machine that makes our parents happy all the time, just like the teacher pleaser made the teacher's coffee and gave us a croissant and did our homework for us, sorry, marked all of our work for us. We're going to come up with a parent pleaser. A machine that we're going to create a persuasive advert for um, that does a variety of different things. So our do now, our warm up our brain is I'd like you to write down in your book three or four things that you think a parent pleaser might do. Things that would make your parents happy if it was done for them. OK, so what kind of features can you think of? I'd like you to pause the video now. Once you've written down uh, three or four things, come back, press play and see what I wrote. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to write down what you think a parent pleaser might do, but I'd like to show you what I thought a parent pleaser might do. I thought a parent pleaser could do things like sing lullabies to babies to help them fall asleep, uh, fix anything that breaks in the house, makes your parents breakfast in bed, it does all the dishes, it cleans your room for you, it's got built-in tutoring so that they don't have to help you with your homework, and it cleans out the disgusting bathroom, okay? So there's no wrong answer here. As long as it's something that would make your parents happy, we can write about it, what the parent pleaser might do. So today we're going to write the first section of our persuasive advert. That is the hook, the bit that gets the reader to go, oh, yes, I want to find out more about that. So we're going to do that using our rhetorical questions. So think back to last week. I taught you about rhetorical questions. What are they and why do we use them? So I'd like you to pause the video and say out loud, what is a rhetorical question and why do we use them? Press play when you're ready to hear the answer. Okay, hopefully you have said what you think a rhetorical question is. A rhetorical question is used to persuade or influence a reader by making them think. It is a question that's asked without expecting an answer, but it helps the reader to think about what you're saying. So we're going to be write, rewriting our hook today. Let me read you that. So we're going to read the section and remember what we're going to write about. This was from the teacher pleaser. It says, do you struggle to put a smile on your teacher's face? Wouldn't it be fantastic if you could see them beaming all day long? If, you, if your answer is yes, then the teacher pleaser is exactly what you've been waiting for. It is an exciting new machine that has been proven to cheer up even the grumpiest of teachers. So we're going to rewrite this paragraph today. What do we need to include? Well, the first section is going to be the rhetorical questions that make the reader go, hmm, yes, I'd like to know what that is. Then we're going to introduce the product, the parent pleaser, and our third sentence is going to explain what the product is. As we go along, I'm going to give you some suggestions for different types of rhetorical questions or vocabulary you could include, but I really want you to be trying to come up with your own suggestions, how to make or how to create these sentences using your own ideas. So before we can come up with good rhetorical questions, we need to know what are the problems that we face if we don't have a parent pleaser and what are the solutions that a parent pleaser might provide? Just like with the coffee maker, if you don't have a coffee maker, then you have to put in all the effort to make a coffee. But if you do have a coffee maker, it makes you for it. We came up with problems and solutions that we could turn into rhetorical questions. So we're going to have to think about what are the problems and solutions that a parent pleaser provides. So a parent pleaser, for example, one of the problems might be you always have tired parents. Without a parent pleaser, you don't. You always have tired parents. And one of the solutions might be it will keep your parents smiling. So you can see from my problems and solutions, I'm not being specific about what the parent pleaser does. I'm not saying like, um, do you always have a messy room or it will uh, give your parents breakfast in bed. I'm just sort of saying vague things about them being unhappy and then being happy after they've got it. So I'd like you to pause the video and write down two problems that you face if you don't have a parent pleaser and two solutions that you get once you do buy the parent pleaser. 
Once you're ready and you've gotten those in your book, come back and press play again. All righty, hopefully you've written down your problems and solutions. Let's go through some more. So some of the problems that we face when we don't have a parent pleaser is that we get grumpy parents because they're so busy. It's not fun for them. Um, they have to clean. Oh, sorry, you have to clean your room. Your parents are always on your back because your room's messy. That's no fun. Or it takes a lot of effort to uh, please your parents all the time. That is definitely a problem. It is hard to keep your parents happy all the time. So maybe the parent pleaser can address that. And some of the solutions that we could have are it will give you a stress-free life. That denied that something I would like. Uh, it can get all chores done in absolute seconds. All right. So those are just some problems and solutions that we could include in our writing today. But of course, if you've come up with something, please feel free to use that in your writing today. So let's get started in the on the first sentence. So these are the rhetorical questions. So the sentences we are rewriting are here on the board and it says, do you struggle to put a smile on your teacher's face? Oh yeah, I thought it for a minute, I got it wrong. Do you struggle to put a smile on your teacher's face? Wouldn't it be fantastic if you could see them beaming all day long? Okay, so we've got two rhetorical questions there. I'm just gonna come to the board so I can underline and show you what I'm talking about. The first rhetorical question, oh, apologies. The first rhetorical question is the problem. Do you struggle to put a smile on your teacher's face? Then we have a second rhetorical question that provides a solution. Wouldn't it be fantastic if you could see them beaming all day long? So we're gonna use this idea of two rhetorical questions, one that presents a problem and the second one that uh, presents a solution to rewrite this section of our paragraph. I've got some suggestions on the board here, but let's see if we can come up with some other ones. I've got things like, do your parents complain about the never ending work? Notice I've used words like never ending. There's a bit of hyperbole there just to make it a bit more like dramatic and exciting. Are they always insisting you clean your messy room? Do you find it hard to keep your parents happy? Wouldn't it be incredible if they had no complaints? So before we write this section, I'd like you to think about some different rhetorical questions that you could write using the problems and solutions that we've talked about on the previous slide. So looking at those problems and solutions, I could turn these into rhetorical questions. Do you suffer from grumpy parent syndrome? Is it exhausting to have to clean your room all the time? Do you hate how much effort it takes to please your parents? And I could turn my solutions into rhetorical questions such as, don't you want uh, to live in a world where your parents keep smiling? Wouldn't you give anything to have a stress-free life? Wouldn't it be incredible if your chores could be done in a matter of seconds? So I'm just rewriting my problems and solutions into rhetorical questions. So for our first section, we're going to rewrite it. You can use some of the suggestions on the board, of course. You can also use your problems and solutions. So I'm going to model my sentence for you now. And I want you to notice that when I'm doing my writing, even though it's at home, I really want you to work hard to make sure your sentences make sense, that you've got the correct punctuation and that your spelling's as good as it can be. If you're really not confident on a word, of course, you can ask a grown up for help. Or if you're really not sure, that's absolutely fine. Just try your best. OK, so here we go. I'm going to rewrite. I'm going to come up with a few rhetorical questions that's going to hook the reader, going to make them want to buy a parent pleaser. So let me start. Let me go with. Ah. Uh, your parents always stressed and what do I need at the end of my rhetorical question? Question mark. Just make sure as well you've got a capital letter at the start of your sentence. Are your parents always stressed? Let me write. I'm going to write a second. It's quite a short sentence. I'm actually going to write a second rhetorical question now. Do they seem exhausted? Hmm. 
Well then, now I want, I've got two rhetorical questions that are quite uh, focusing on the problem. Now I'm going to get a rhetorical question that focuses on the solution because I want the reader to think like, oh yeah, I want to think about the positives of this situation. So I could have something like, wouldn't it? Would what do I need in the middle of wouldn't it? It is a contraction. That's right. I need a apostrophe. Make sure it's up there. Wouldn't it be incredible? Wouldn't it be incredible if you and I'm, we're using that first person, like I'm talking directly to somebody now. I don't want to say, wouldn't it be incredible if people could always be happy? I want to say, no, it wouldn't it always be, incre wouldn't it be incredible if you were happy? Because it's like I'm talking directly to them. Wouldn't it be incredible if you could make them happy? all the time lovely make sure you've got that uh question mark at the end there so i'm going to ask you to pause the video now and you're going to rewrite that first sentence i'll leave this screen up on the board with some suggestions of rhetorical questions but if you've come up with any more please use them in your writing and can you please write out that first two or three sentences those first two or three rhetorical questions on your page now remember it's a new paragraph it should there should be uh using every second line please don't do what i did i had to use every line because i don't have as much space as you try to write on every second line so that you've got room to fix it up if possible OK, and when you're ready to move on to the next section, come back and press play. OK, I look forward to reading your uh, paragraphs now. So I'm going to just get a copy of what I've written so far so that I can rewrite it in a moment. We're going to be um going on to our next sentence now we're going to the next section which is all about introducing the product so looking back at the teacher pleaser the next sentence said if your answer is yes then the teacher pleaser is exactly what you've been waiting for so we're going to start this sentence using a fronted adverbial so you might say something like if you just screamed yes if you can relate if this sounds like you if you're nodding your head OK, so of course you can come up with some more and then you're going to introduce the product. The parent pleaser is going to change your life. The parent pleaser will solve all your problems. The parent pleaser will do such and such. So what else can you come up with? So we're going to see if we can get any more fronted adverbials going. So maybe you could also write uh, something just uh, like, well, well then. The teacher pleaser is the product of your dreams, okay? Um, we're also going to think, what, what other hyperbole can we use? How can we uh, really increase our language or improve our language? So we could say that it's going to change your life. What else might it do? It's going to change your life. Uh, we could have something like it's going to um revolutionize revolutionize your world what why is it so amazing okay so thinking about that hyperbole so i'd like you to pause the video now and just off on a spare bit of paper or somewhere else just think about or write down some suggestions what hyperbole could you use that's like over the top dramatic? And what front of verbial will you use? When you're ready to do the shared write, come back, press play. Okay, hopefully you're ready to join in and see our next sentence with me. So I'm gonna start writing on the board here. I'm gonna recheck my work. Are your parents always stressed? Do they seem exhausted? Wouldn't it be incredible if you could make them happy all the time? So I'm going to start with a front of verb. I'm going to write, well then, what do I always, always, always need after my front of that verb? 
Hopefully you remember the is a comma. Well then, the parent pleaser. Notice that parent pleaser has capital letters. That is because it is a product, an object. So we need to give it, it's a noun, we need to give it its capital letters. The parent pleaser is the device that will change your life. And I'm going to use an exclamation mark there because I'm using hyperbole. So I'd like you to pause the video now and I'd like you to write out your next sentence using a front adverbial and hyperbole to show how amazing the product is. When you're ready for the next session, you can come back and press play. Okay, we're on to our last sentence um, in our paragraph today where we're going to explain what the product is and what it does. So looking back at our parent pleaser, it said, it is an exciting new machine that has been proven to cheer up even the grumpiest of teachers. So we're explaining what solution is this product going to provide? So we might say something, we could use our uh, noun phrases like it is a revolutionary machine. It is an innovative product. It's a mind blowing machine. Um, and then we could also use some hyperbole to really emphasize our point. You won't be able to live without it. It will change your life. So just having a bit of a think, I'd like you to pause the video in a moment, have a think about hyperbole. What are you going to say that it does? What is the problem? Is it going to solve? Uh, <laughs> What problem is it going to solve? Um, and just really think about what kind of noun phrases you can use to describe the machine. Okay, so I'd like you to, if you can, write one down to somewhere on the side. It doesn't need to be in the paragraph just yet. Some noun phrases to describe the machine or product. When you're ready to join in my shared write, then you can come back and press play. Okay, all right. Hopefully you've written down something that you're going to use in your work. I'm going to go and um, grab my paragraph. I'm just going to copy it so I can keep writing on it. There we go. And I'm going to pick up where we left off and I'm going to use those over the top hyperboles to show a solution to the product. So let me see. I could say that. What is it going to do? It's I'm going to say it's definitely going to relax your parents. So I'm going to use some really strong language. I'm going to say um it oh dear that was awful writing so if we make our hand if our handwriting is not looking very good we need to make sure we're erasing it crossing out rewriting it always practicing practicing our handwriting there's no excuse to let it um slack off while we're at home so i'm going to be landing on the line it is and I'm going to use a really strong word here. I'm going to say guaranteed. That means there's no way it's going to fail. So I'm going to put, oh, did not land on the line. Let me erase that, see if I can get that right. Um, is guaranteed. Guaranteed. It is guaranteed to relax even the most stressed out And getting my punctuation at the end there. Right, let me leave it on this screen for you. I'd like you to pause the video, write out your last sentence that you're rewriting. What is the solution that you're providing or that you're going to get from the parent pleaser? 
once you've written that, please take a photo and upload it onto Seesaw for us because we really want to see what paragraph you've written about the parent please are. It's a fantastic opportunity for us to praise you and show, say, see how amazing your writing is going, even though you're working from home. It's really, really a special moment for us when we get to see that. So please put it up there. I hope you've had a lovely lesson. I look forward to reading your work and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow where we start writing about the new features that will be uh, part of the parent please are that the uh, we're going to be getting. Have a lovely, lovely day and enjoy the rest of uh, your lessons. Bye.